Well, there were more school and student demonstrations today, peaceful ones, about the cuts to the education budget, specifically the axing of the education maintenance allowance in England, worth up to £30 a week, which children for low-income households receive to help them stay in full-time education. It is not under threat in Scotland, Northern Ireland or Wales. And in England, it's to be replaced by what the government calls an enhanced discretionary learner support fund. Here's David Grossman. A very different type of student protest in Dudley this morning and not a policeman nor senior royal in sight, just some very vocal college students. The EMA that they're chanting about is the Educational Maintenance Allowance, introduced by Labour in England in 2005. It's worth up to £30 a week for 16 to 19 year olds in full time further education. To get the full whack, your family income must be under £21,000 a year. At Dudley College, of the 2,500 students, nearly 8 in 10 qualify. Here in the West Midlands, we have, a, you know, we have some real difficulties because the jobs simply aren't there for young people. So coming to education has helped them prepare for the jobs when they come on board and also helps them develop their skills. Now, the group who will be disadvantaged by the removal of the DMAs are those young people who are less likely to want to participate in education. They come from the poorer families. They come from the families when the support isn't necessarily there. So as we take EMA off that group, what we're doing is we're actually really hitting the worst off in society hardest first of all and that doesn't seem to be the best way to ensure that all of our young people are engaged in education. The EMA is aimed at keeping young people in education past 16 and in 2009 to 10 643,000 were paid the EMA that's about half of the age group in full-time education but research suggests that for the vast majority, the EMA made no difference to their decision to stay on. Only 6% said they would have dropped out without it. That means it cost the taxpayer over £15,000 a year per student who decided to stay on because of the EMA. At the moment, it's being, uh, the £560 million is spread across a, a large number of people, 90% uh, of whom, our research says, uh, would have stayed on in, uh, into the sixth form of college uh, regardless of the EMA. And what we want to do in these very difficult financial circumstances is to target that money uh, on those young people who are in greatest financial need. As well as more targeted help, the government is introducing the pupil premium. That's an extra £430 a year paid to schools for the most disadvantaged students. At the Institute for Fiscal Studies, they've been looking at whether this earlier help will give more value for money than the EMA. Educational research does tend to highlight early intervention as an important area to focus um, investments or improvements because in intervening early can drive larger and sustainable improvements in children's outcomes. However, when we've looked at the people premium, uh, the research that we have done has suggested that it will only have a very modest effect on educational attainment and that's because the research into the importance of additional money has tended to show that that doesn't really drive improvements in uh, education attainment at least not on a substantial level meanwhile at number 11 downing street some very young looking students staged a sit-in actually the chancellor was hosting the children's christmas party complete with dancing fairies cartoon monsters and the mad hatter this year, of course, there is no confusing the Chancellor with Santa Claus, but amongst all the cuts, he was at least promising a real terms increase in school spending for England. But we learned today that is a trick he hasn't pulled off. I'm impressed. What was announced to be a 0.1% increase in real terms school spending will now be a real terms flat uh, settlement for schools, which means that the total amount will be going up. Uh, in line with inflation but not going it up any faster than inflation. There was relief today for central London from the recent spate of student demonstrations. What was billed as a mass protest outside the Department for Business actually attracted just a couple of dozen and they were successfully corralled on the other side of the road. One dangerous looking pair did make it past the cordon though but they were largely ignored by police, perhaps because they looked like they would disperse themselves as soon as it was time for countdown. David Grossman, well, we asked the Education Department for a minister to appear live tonight. We were told that nobody was available. 
Andy Burnham is the Education sh Shadow Education Secretary, and he is with me now. Uh, Andy Burnham, uh, first of all, there is a story in the Telegraph tomorrow, uh, that Dur Durham, a study by Durham University says that actually, in terms of under fives, that your cash, the cash that you poured in, did not help literacy or numeracy. Well, I've not seen that study, but I don't accept that. Standards uh, raised uh, across the board under, under Labour, and particularly uh, amongst uh, younger, younger people, and particularly in the, in the early years of education. So I'll have to look at the detail, mm. but quite frankly, I think I would, uh, I would challenge that uh, finding. Uh, let's just look at EME, particularly mm. Education Maintenance, which is staying in Scotland, uh, Wales and Northern Ireland. Um, the government says that actually more than 80% of pupils in mm. receipt of that have said that they would have gone on to, they would be still in full-time education, that mm. actually it did not make the critical difference. And this way, they're targeting money much more closely on need. Well, the EMA is one of the policies that I'm proudest of of our time in government. It sends a powerful message to families and children, particularly from less well-off backgrounds, that they could have high hopes of what life might deliver for them. And I think this cut is an attack on aspiration. Let me just deal with your point explicitly. The IFS tomorrow will say that the EMA more than pays for itself. Now, this completely demolishes the threadbare argument that the government have put forward because, you know, even on the government's figures, around 90,000 people are staying on in education. Who wouldn't otherwise if there wasn't EMA? But for those, for the rest, it's both encouraging them to complete their course and achieve better results. So the EMA according to all of the evidence, is a success. And the IFS will say so pretty convincingly tomorrow. But in fact, what the government is saying is that it's actually going to be uh, replaced by probably what will be an autonomous college-based discretionary fund, building in the Learner Support Fund, which has got 75 million in at the moment. Now, colleges can then target. <coughs> so, for example, a rural college, because a lot of councils have not stepped up to the plate with transport, a rural college can provide transport to help more young people get to college. Well, that, I'm afraid, is just a nonsense because you know, we're talking here of a much reduced scheme, possibly about 10% of what uh, is currently spent on, on EMA. And, of course, EMA is used by many people uh, for transport. Because but, the but, local but, authority but, doesn't provide it. But, but, but young people can make that choice, and if they want to go to a college that's right for them and so they have to travel, they can make that choice. But more than that, Kirsty, EMA means for a young person uh, that they don't have to take a part-time job if they're not from a particularly well-off home. So they can focus on their studies, or it means they can buy more books or more equipment to support their work. This policy really is a lifeline for young people uh, from the least well-off backgrounds, and it's raised their sights about what life may uh, deliver for them. And the government, they promised to keep it before the election. David Cameron explicitly said he would keep it. Michael Gove said he would keep it. Mm. And this is an attack on only aspiration. Only 6% in David Grossman's report, only 6% said they would stay on because of EME. Well, as I said, around 90,000 young people are staying on because of a... That, to put it in human terms, that's what it equates to. But that's not the end of the story. The government liked to say... But the minister said it. He wouldn't come on the programme tonight, I see. But he likes to say that this is just a, a waste but, of money because they'd have stayed but on Andy anyway. Burnham, the truth is, and you, the truth is that there is going to be an enhanced learner support scheme. It is not going to be 7 it's, it's going to be substantial. Well, you don't know how much Kirstie, it's going to be. It's about 10 you, well, know. Not, you know, it's a scandal, actually, that EMA closes to applications this week and the government haven't brought details of their new scheme to Parliament. They're not planning a vote in Parliament, even though they promised uh, to keep it. And the point you're missing is the government are only telling half of the story. For those young people who may have otherwise stayed on, nevertheless, EMA helps them focus on their studies because they don't have to go out to work or they don't have to walk a long way to, to college or they can buy books or they can buy equipment that will help them uh, fulfil fulfill their potential. But so it, this is why it, it works. But are you just saying that a, a, a Labour government would simply reinstitute uh, EMAs but actually there's probably a better targeted way of doing it? Well, I'd be prepared to sit with the government and say, can we better target EMA? Can we make the scheme even more efficient than it currently is? Now, any responsible opposition politician should be prepared to do that, and I would be prepared to do it. What I object to is the way this government is behaving, an arrogant dismissal of the evidence. They're basically pulling the plug on schemes that work. We saw it with school sport. We've seen it again with EMA, and we've seen the anger of young people who feel that this government is not listening to them, and with the tripling of fees... This government has delivered a double betrayal to young people. Andy Brennan, thank you very much.